Hi everyone, my name is Maddie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my January book haul. Now, the reason I sound like I'm questioning if this is my January book haul is because I kind of am. I normally try and film my book hauls right at the end of the month, but I'm actually filming this on the 22nd of January. It's just the time I had to film and I need a video for tomorrow, so we're filming it. But also I filmed my December book haul quite early as well, so quite a few of these books did actually arrive with me in December. So it's kind of just a book haul, we're going with it. I don't know how many books I have, but we'll tell you that or it'll probably be in the title. So I do have quite a few books to talk about. Incredibly, quite a lot of these are from you guys. You guys continue to spoil me by sending things off my wish list, which is just insane to me, but obviously very much appreciated. So I would of course be thanking people as I go through this list. But as always with a book haul, I don't really have a plan nor a structure for what order I'm gonna go through these books in. So I don't really know where to start. I would be keen normally to start with physical books and then move on to eBooks, but I do actually think I'm gonna start by talking about a book that was gifted to me by a publisher. So we'll start there, which is an eBook. And then I think I'll probably get into all the ones that you guys gifted me. So the one book that I did get in January from a publisher is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Yes, I've already read this book. I literally started reading it the day I got it and I finished it the day after. Nothing was going to stop me from reading this book. I have been looking forward to it for so long and the fact that I didn't have to wait till June makes me so incredibly happy. I really thought I was going to have to and I am just so grateful to have got to read this book. I'm not gonna review it too much here because obviously it'll be in my wrap up, which you'll see in like a couple weeks, but it was phenomenal. It's a five star read, very much expected. And also I'm still just obsessed with the cover of this book. It's so gorgeous. So this does follow August, who is kind of quite of a pessimist or a realist at least. And she wants to kind of live out her life in New York, kind of be miserable. She's had a kind of difficult upbringing and she's struggling with school and she's just moved out to New York. And she just kind of wants to live in her world where love doesn't exist and everything isn't as happy as people make it seem. And then she meets Jane on the train and maybe she can't be quite so pessimistic anymore. And Jane is like this almost 70s, 80s vibe, like really cool leather jacket, all of this. And then they discover that the reason Jane acts like this is because she is actually from the 70s or 80s. I can't remember which decade. My brain's not here this month, we know this but she has actually been stuck on the train in some weird time loop thing, which obviously gets explained in the book. Surprisingly well for a contemporary story, I was actually quite impressed by how all this like fantasy elements were brought in. But yeah, it's just a phenomenal sort of found family LGBT, of course, from Casey McQuiston story. It's beautiful, the writing's gorgeous, the characters and the banter are just phenomenal, as you would expect. I'm not meant to be reviewing it, but it's great. And I'm incredibly grateful to the publisher for sending me this book. Um, I will obviously be reviewing it on NetGalley, I'll be reviewing it in my wrap up. Knowing me, I'll probably find a million other videos this year to talk about it in, but I loved it. Okay, so I guess now we should probably get into the books you guys gifted me and I've just made the stack and it's too many. You guys are just nuts, the lot of you, but thank you, obviously. So I'm pretty much just gonna do these in the order that I received them because it's easiest. However, I'm gonna go slightly off order for the first ones because this person did send me books throughout the month and so I'm just gonna bring all the ones from this one person to the beginning. And that is these three all from Alex. So I'll quickly go through all of them and they did explain in their note that what they wanted to do was kind of send me some books from my list and some books that they really loved um, so that I could like try something different, which is really exciting. I am kind of nervous getting too many books that aren't ones that are on my list because I do have a huge TBR already and I try and really limit it to books I think I'm going to love but I'm always up for trying something a bit different. So firstly, the one that was on my list is The Future of Another Timeline by Annalie Newitz, I think. And oh my God, I'm so hyped. I'm pretty sure this is female, female kind of sci-fi dystopian maybe vibes. It's definitely sci-fi. I'm not completely sure if it's dystopian, but I'll just read you the small blurb on the back and it sounds dystopian to me. And so it says, in a world that's just a step away from our own, time travel is possible, but war is brewing. A secret group is trying to destroy women's rights. If they succeed, only a small elite will have the power to shape the past, present and future. So honestly, this sounds kind of Umbrella Academy-ish. I'm not gonna lie, but I am so here for that. Umbrella Academy is a show I absolutely love. I think it's so clever. So I am always here for more LGBT books that are like sci-fi-y, time travel -y, dystopian. I've heard about this one a really long time ago. For some reason in my head, it was a novella. I'm not sure where I got that from because it's very much not. It's like three, 400 pages, 350. So 
definitely not a novella but I'm really excited for it and I love how bright it is. I don't think I've ever had a book so like fluorescently orange but I love it. So obviously thank you to Alex for this one. And then the two they got me not from my wish list is Dance 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 by Murakami and Bright City Lights by Jay McInerney. So firstly Dance Dance Dance. I'm hyped for this. I've been really really wanting to try some Murakami. I've heard phenomenal things about so many of his books but I never knew where to start and I swear I've googled where to start so many times and everyone has a different suggestion. So I'm basically taking this as the suggestion of this is where to start with Murakami. If there's anyone who has read Murakami and thinks this is just not the place to start and it's gonna be like too weird or too obscure and I'm gonna struggle with it more than enjoy it, do let me know and I'll get something else to start with. But very, very intrigued by this one. And in the gift note, Alex said this contemporary Japanese magical realism and honestly all those words absolutely do it for me. So it says high class cool girls build to MasterCard, a psychic 13 year old dropout with a passion for talking heads, a hunky matinee idol doomed to play dentists and teachers, a one-armed beachcombing poet, an uptight hotel clerk, and one very bemused narrator caught in the web of advanced capitalist mayhem. I do not know what that means, but I'm hyped. I love that like huge variety in characters and yeah, very intrigued to try some Murakami. Very intrigued to see if I like it. And then the last one, as I said, is Bright Lights Big City by Jay McInerney. This is one I actually mentioned to my mum and she has read um, and said I will probably love. I think it's LGBT. I think it's set in New York, kind of the club scene from maybe like the 80s. I'm not sure about that. That could be completely wrong but nonetheless I'm super excited. The one thing I will say, um, I don't know how, but basically Amazon screwed up and have sent me a copy in French. I do not speak French. However, as I said, my mum has read this and has a copy and I think the cover of this one is so much nicer than the UK copy and it's also super floppy. So basically I'm gonna keep this and read my mum's English version. So it works out, I get the cool cover and still get to read it in English. But yeah, why does Amazon do this? Like literally, if you search this book on Amazon and click mass market paperback, the French comes up on Amazon UK. So that's just a flaw in their system, honestly. I don't know how they've managed that, but nonetheless, I think it's gonna be the kind of book I love. Next up, I'm gonna go slightly out of order again, because again, this person sent me books throughout the month, and that is Molly from Mind of Molly, who needs to stop. Obviously, like, I'm never gonna complain about being sent books, but Molly, you have been too kind. She has sent me these three, which obviously I'm going to go through, and I think there's another one on the way from her because she's too much, but that hasn't arrived and I need to film this today. So that will be in the next book haul. So we're going to get, I think, a couple months in a row with books from Molly. She's, she's nuts, but we love her. So first up is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. I am so excited for this. This is kind of like a memoir, I think, of George M. Johnson, and I have heard the most phenomenal things about this. I have not heard a bad word said about it. It's got a stunning cover, absolutely stunning. And everyone says it's kind of so fascinating and so well written and talks about so many important issues. So very, very excited. LGBT memoir, like what else could I want? And I have actually been surprisingly curious to try more nonfiction having to have read the books I did for work. I hadn't read nonfiction in years before that and didn't think I had any interest in it. But although it would be my first choice, I did actually enjoy reading those a lot more than I expected to and would be intrigued to read more. So LGBT memoir, definitely a good shout. But if anyone has nonfiction recommendations, I'm happy to take them because I'm definitely considering trying some more in future. Next up, she sent me You Had Me at Hola, Hola. I, this annoys me because it's a brilliantly clever title, but I feel so damn British and uneducated when I try and say it, because this phrase is you had me at hello. That's like a common phrase for like romance in English, you had me at hello. But I feel like it kind of works because of the hut in the hat and the hut in hello. And obviously, hola, you don't say the H. And so like incredibly clever title, love it, so amazing. My brain doesn't know how to say it, so I'm not going to, but this is by Alexis Daria and Oh, I'm so excited. This is like a Latinx romance, I'm pretty sure. I've heard yet again, the most amazing things about this. I mean, all of these books I've heard amazing things about, I wouldn't be putting them on my wish list if I hadn't. And just again, with the stunning covers, like cover artists are really just killing it at the moment. Um, I don't read too much romance, but when I read it, I love it. It's just not something I gravitate to that often. I especially gravitate to it in the summer though. That's very much a thing. We get to spring and summer and I start picking up one or two and then we get to June and July and I read all of them. Like I did a whole video last 
maybe actually October, may have struck, gone into autumn with like reading seven romance books in seven days. So incredibly excited for this one. And it's kind of the perfect vibe for right now because I just started a stressful job. I have a bit less time to read. So quick, fun, high intensity romance is exactly what we're here for. And Molly got it spot on with this. And then Molly also sent me Wranglestone by Darren Charlton. This is one I heard about first, I think at Yauk, like a good couple years ago now, because yeah, it's been a year and a half at least since I've been, and was kind of interested in, but I vaguely remember it being about zombies, which is not necessarily my favorite thing. But I know it's LGBT, I know it's dystopian, and Spoops from Spoopy Hole especially loves this one, and I trust her and she really wants me to read it. So 100% trusting her judgment. And this is also technically a polar fantasy. So Polarthon is in the first week of February. Will I have time to read lots of books? Probably not, because I'm averaging about one, maybe two books a week at the moment. But nonetheless, I will probably try and get this one in. I kind of know what I'm planning to read for Polarthon. Um, I probably won't complete it because that would require me reading three books in a week, which is highly unlikely, if I'm honest. But I'm gonna give it my best shot, I think is what we're gonna go with. But I'm so excited. I don't actually know what this is about. Let's let's do some reading. The islands of Lake Wranglestone are a safe haven in a world filled with the restless dead. But as the lake freezes over, there's nothing to stop them from crossing the ice. Ooh, okay. I see that. Okay, so they're in like a safe island away from the zombies, but obviously if the lake freezes, they're no longer safe. That's really cool for a concept. That's gonna be creepy. Is this gonna scare me? Is this horror? Am I gonna get freaked out? Molly and Spooks, be prepared for messaging you polis on week scared. Because I'm the worst, and that sounds kind of creepy. But beautiful and exciting, and I'm ready for it. Okay, next up we have another person who sent me two books. What are you all doing? But I love it. And these are from Erin. And oh my god, okay. So these are the two, let's go through them. Starting with A Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I've never read any Grady Hendrix before because I think most of the books they do are kind of horror, which is not necessarily my thing. But I got the impression that this one's like much less horror-y and it has gorgeous floppy American pages, which I'm just, just enjoying. And I mean, look at, look. Look at that. It is absolutely stunning. And then under the dust jacket, it's this. And it's got this cool little like public library stamp. And I just am a little bit obsessed with the aesthetics of this book. I'm not going to lie. But as it says, it's some book club's guide to slaying vampires. And I think this follows a book club who kind of read about like vampires and like all the you know typical books of vampires and it shows how to kill them and then like a vampire kind of comes to town and they end up figuring out that this person's a vampire because they've read these books maybe i don't know i've heard mixed things about this when it first came out it was getting rave reviews and i do actually think it'll be one i really enjoy but i know there's been a couple people since who i'm friends with who haven't loved it so i'm kind of nervous but i'm pretty optimistic i'm not gonna lie and i just i just i'm something about it really really grabs my attention and draws me in i love vampires in a like completely contemporary setting i always think that's good fun instead of like a really gothic like transylvania kind of you know the vibe so i'm very excited and then erin also very kindly got me the ruin of kings by jen lyons i don't know much about this other than the fact it's queer fantasy and apparently like very queer fantasy, which has me excited. It is, however, very chunky. And it, it has it has a lot of words on a page. So I'm very intimidated by this and I have no idea when I'll get to it. This series, I think is maybe a quartet. I think the first three books are already out with the fourth coming out this year, actually quite soon. I think it's in like a couple months. So this may be like a 2021 project reading these books because the number of series I have to read these years, it is 2021. This might be a 2022 project reading these books. Um, this feels like the kind of series from what I've heard from people that is very much marathon worthy. Um, read them all in one go, have a really good time with it. And I get the impression you get really, really attached to the characters. And with them all being queer, I'm trying to get even more attached to them. So this might be a when the series is completed, which I think is this year, read them all in one go. Maybe, but nonetheless, super excited. I know Katie from Brightness Katie Reads loves this. Shanice from Shanice Noel loves this. And also CG Drews, who I follow on Instagram, who goes by Paper Fury and has actually written a few books herself, which I love. She loves this and a lot of the books she loves, I love. So very optimistic. I think there's dragons in this as well, judging by the fact that Spine says it's the like chorus of dragons series. 
Okay, I've just read the blurb and like I'm not gonna read it out and I don't fully understand it. I always skim blurbs in fantasy so as not to accidentally tell myself more than I want to, but I just love the last line of it, which is, then again, maybe Kieran isn't the hero, for he's not destined to save the empire, he's destined to destroy it. We love a catchy tagline. We love a catchy tagline. So excited to get to this huge chonker at some point in the future. <laughs> Next up, I do have two books from Nicola and she was incredibly kind to send these. And also I just found it kind of hilarious and so, just so sweet. I put both of these on my wish list and they literally appeared about three or four days later. Like Nicola was on it. It was probably just a coincidence, but I just did not accept them to appear that quickly. But Nicola sent me both of these, which are two books by Christina Lauren, which I'll quickly talk about. And she said that like with starting a new job, a cozy romance is probably the kind of vibe, as I've already said, spot on with that logic, exactly correct. So excited to get to both of these. I have read a couple of Christina Lauren's. I've read The Unhoneymooners and I've read Autobiography, but I've been super intrigued to try some of her others. And these are the two which I've heard really good things about. So they're kind of where I'm gonna start. Although I have already started with Christina Lauren, this feels like I'm properly like making the effort to read their books instead of just like happening to read their books, if that makes any sense. Okay, so I just had to read the blurb of this to refresh myself and oh my God, I'm so excited. So this is Josh and Hazel's guide to not dating, which follows Josh and Hazel, who have known each other for years, they've known each other since university, but Hazel's like, she's a lot to handle. She knows she's a bit like off the wall. She has an army of pets. She has loads of crazy things. And yeah, she's just a lot and she knows this. And then Josh gets into kind of an unfortunate situation with a cheating ex-girlfriend. And so the two of them basically start setting each other up on double dates and they go out on these double dates together. And I get the impression they get progressively worse, but you know, of course they could never date each other. Of course they couldn't. And therefore they're probably going to because it's a romance book and I'm excited. And then there is Roomies, which if I remember correctly, this follows someone who like comes across this guy on the subway who's like busking and just phenomenal. And actually this guy saves her from an accident in the subway. And so she tries to pay him by getting him an audition for a Broadway show, but finds out he's going back to Ireland, I think is where he needs to be deported to. And so they get married and start living together so that he can stay and get a visa. And I'm kind of here for it. I'm so here for New York setting. I don't know if this one's set in New York too. No, it doesn't look like it is, but I'm so here for the New York setting and Subway and Broadway and like, it just you can just tell the vibes of this are gonna be exactly what I need right now. And now we're down to the last two books that were gifted to me. I can't honestly believe I'm still talking about books gifted to me. It's just, it blows my mind every single time I think about it, honestly, it really, really does. But I also cannot overstate how much it has meant to me in these first few weeks of work. I have been very tired and really quite stressed as you would expect starting a new job and being able to come home to gifts, be it from people I'm friends with or people who just know me from the internet has honestly meant the world. And I'm not gonna get too sappy on you because it's a Friday evening and I'm exhausted. So that's not gonna run well, but just know how much it means and how much it's appreciated. Like it's so much more than receiving a book. Like, honestly, I cannot even describe how much it means. And if we want like any context for how much things mean at the moment, Spoops sent me some flowers um, and she got selfies of me bawling my eyes out crying. I, yeah, I was a mess, but it was so cute. I can't, I can't with all of you, you're all too nice. But anyway, let's talk about these last two books. So firstly, we have The Missing of Claire de Lune by Christelle Davos. This is the second book in the Mirror Visitor series, which I haven't read the first book yet, but the way Jade has been speaking about it, I know I really want to. And this is from Emma Georgie, so thank you so much to them. As I said, I haven't read the first book yet. I don't even want to be able to give a synopsis because I don't know enough about the series. I know it's polar fantasy, I know Jade, adores it. It's translated from French, which is a little bit different. And the one thing, this is the pettiest thing in the world, the one thing that's frustrating about being translated from French is the French have the spines of their books the other way around. The writing goes the other way. Instead of going top to bottom, it goes bottom to top. Um, which isn't inherently a problem, except when this is like on my shelves, the spines the other way around from my other books. And yeah, so it's one of the reasons I'm glad I have more than one of these books because they can go next to each other. And as a series, they'll look fine. But that's such a petty thing and I just don't, just why? Change it for the UK cover. It doesn't match. But anyway, not the point. Um, I don't know much about the series. I know it follows Ophelia. I know that like you can have different powers and hers is that if she touches an object, she can like 
know its past and know who it belongs to and things like that, I think. I don't know more than that. Um, I don't want to spoil myself. I really want to go into it really, really blind. It feels like the kind of thing I'm absolutely going to love. So thank you so much to Emma. I'm very excited. I also partially put it on my wish list because I'm really, really concerned that the hardbacks are going to stop being sold before I get around to the series. So, you know, do the sensible thing, buy the whole series before starting it. It's what I do. And also I love that this was gifted by a French subscriber and a French book. It's just really lovely. It's just so nice. And then the last book I was gifted is The Mermaid's Voice Returns in this one by Amanda Lovelace. I did read The Princess Saves Herself in this one in 2020? 2019? One of the two. 2020 is a blur. No, it was definitely 2019. It must have been because yeah, 2020 I was at home the whole time and I'm pretty sure I read it at uni. Not the point. I really enjoyed it. It broke me as a human, but I really enjoyed it. And I'm still really keen to get into more poetry. So I'm very intrigued to read the rest of Amanda Lovelace's books. Favourite thing is the fact that the writing is in blue. Literally my favourite thing ever when books aren't written in black ink. I don't know why it makes my heart so happy, but it really does. And just, oh, just like, look at this on the back. And she tore the stars apart. Like, I want that as a print, just like a little print with the little, the little star emoji. We love it. But yeah, this is a poetry collection. They're very feminist about kind of women standing up for themselves. They're almost, I feel, memoir-ish of Amanda Lovelace's life, especially the first one you could tell really came from her own experiences. But yeah, I'm so excited to get this one. And this was from Maya. So thank you so much to Maya. Also, if you see me looking inside the front covers, I do stick the gift notes in, in every single book I receive from someone. If it comes with a gift note, sometimes Amazon is rubbish. So like, if you ever send me a book, trust me, it is like you've like inscribed it for me. I will always know that it was from you. I will, yeah, that is gonna be in every single book that's gifted to me. Okay, so moving on to books I bought for myself, we have a grand total of one book to talk about. I do have some ebooks, but actual physical books, we have one. And that is The Way to the Stars by Kay Ankrum. I have read The Wicked King by Kay Ankrum a couple years ago. I think it was my first book of 2019. And I really, really enjoyed it. I didn't love it as much as some people, but I am planning a reread of it because I think I was not almost too young, but I feel like it would resonate more with me now. For some reason, I just really think it would, so I definitely want to reread it. But every time I mention that I quite liked that book, everyone goes, read The Way to the Stars, you'll love it like so much more. I'm pretty sure this is female, female. Side note, the edges are the coolest thing ever. And it's sci-fi. I really wish I knew more about these books, but I don't. Let's see, shall we? Okay, this sounds so cute. So this follows Alexandria, whose dream is to like travel the universe, I guess, like be out in the stars, be in space and it's not possible because of her upbringing, because of her circumstances in life, but then she runs into this person who she kind of forms a very quick enemy with and then discovers that their mother, I think, is an astronaut and that they have to wait every day to hear some sort of signal from them and these two form a kind of like unlikely slow friendship, I think, and it sounds really cute and I have heard the best things about this and Kay Ankara does a really, really good job, I feel, of having a book set in our world, like a contemporary setting with this like slight fantastical or sci-fi-ish element, I guess. But it like feels so magical whilst feeling really grounded in reality. And, and yeah, Kay Ankrum is phenomenal with that. So, so excited to get to this one. And then quickly in terms of eBooks, I did get myself three eBooks this month. The first being The Princess Trap by Talia Hibbert. Again, I know practically nothing about this, but it's Talia Hibbert and it was 99p on Kindle. So of course I bought it. I think it just had a cover redesign, which is why it was cheap on Kindle for a minute. But I am so excited about it. I think it's almost like fake to hate to love. It had a trope in it that I really like and I'm gonna look up which one. Okay, yeah, it's a story of wicked royals, fake engagements and fed up officer working trapped in the midst of it all. I trust Talia Hibbert so much, it's actually mad. Okay, I'm so excited for this. Okay, so this follows Cherry who is apparently 30 flirty and done with men until she meets a prince who happens to check like some of the boxes she's looking for. And this is a quote from the blurb I just read. When they get caught um, kissing, in an alleyway by the paparazzi and photos get taken, she suddenly ends up with a big old engagement ring on her hand. I'm so here for this. This sounds like such good fun. I think it's relatively short. I'm probably gonna see if I can squeeze it in before the end of January because I really, really want to, but I had to, it was 99p. I couldn't resist. And then the other two I've got, I'll just very, very briefly talk about, and I don't actually know their titles, but it's the two Fever King novellas. Okay, so the two books are The Traitor's Crown and The Stars and Everything In Between, both by Victoria Lee. These are two novellas which go with the Fever King duology, which I am currently reading and you'll probably actually be seeing a vlog of me reading 
as the next video you see. Um, but alongside it, I obviously want to read the two ebook novellas that go with it that were released for like a pound each by Victoria Lee. So one of them is a prequel to the whole series and it follows kind of the antagonist of the series and kind of where he came from, I think. So that's going to be super interesting to read. I am choosing to read it after finishing the series instead of reading it before. Just out of choice. I just prefer reading the core series first. And then I think the other one is kind of cutesy, maybe, between the kind of two main love interests, perhaps. I may be very, very highly mistaken. You can watch the vlog that comes out in a day or two to see if I'm right. And also to see my thoughts on both of those books, because it will be mentioned there. Okay, so no joke, less than five minutes after I finished filming, look what arrived. Um, I'm guessing this is from Molly. I know Molly has sent me something and I think we will have Prime, so I'd assume it would arrive today. I have a guess of what this is, so we'll open it together in a second, but I'm gonna guess first. My guess is this is The Night's Shadow by Sebastian de Castell. This series is Jade's, I think, favourite series of all time. If not, it's definitely up there. And Molly, Steph and I are planning to buddy read the second book in the series in February, because basically it'll be funny to see Jade just suffer at all of us reading her favourite book at the exact same time, the second book is her favourite in the series. Um, I own the first book and I put the second on my wish list, like as soon as we decided to buddy read. And I do not believe Molly is capable of going on my wish list without buying me this as we're buddy reading it and she knows Jay's loves it. So we're gonna open it and see if I guessed correctly. It's chunky, and I know it's chunky. Yeah, look at that. Night Shadow, oh, they're so floppy. I love how floppy these are. Why are more UK paperbacks not like this? It's so chunky. It's like 600 pages on my February TV. That's terrifying, but you don't know that because I've not filmed it yet. I just know what books I need to get to. But this is The Night Shadow by Sebastian de Castell. I don't know much about this series as I've not read the first one yet. I'm trying to squeeze in before the end of January, but I think it follows these group of people called the Great Coats who are basically framed for the murder of someone, possibly their master. I don't know, but Jade loves it and I trust Jade completely. And I know Steph loved the first one as did Molly. So chances of me loving the series are very, very high. And I'm incredibly excited to read this and so excited to just destroy Jade's mind by all three of us reading it at the same time. It's gonna be good fun. So thank you again to the lovely, lovely Molly. You know I love you and I'm very, very grateful. Also, I just got the gift note out of the package and I normally don't read them out because it feels a bit sort of odd reading them out, but I'm reading this one because it's hilarious. It says, thank you for being the best pizza ever. For context, when they were trying to guess what my full name is, because Maddie is not my full name, it's just the name I go by, um, they were getting frustrated and guessed margarita and pizza is my favorite food. So I am now pizza um, slash margarita. So the context for that. And then also let's destroy Jade. I am so glad we're all on the same page with why we're reading this book together. So that is all the books. I'm going to do the thing I do stupidly every month and try and hold them all up. There are a couple on the floor as well, but that's what we're getting because if I pick up any more than that, they will all get dropped. So that is it for the video. I will say again, thank you so incredibly much to every single person that sent me something. I cannot reiterate how grateful I am, especially at the moment. It's made such a difference to my mood and I don't care if that's real CL therapy, it helps. But I am incredibly grateful. I'm so excited to read all of these books. I don't know when I'll get to them. I have a very, very, very big TBR, but nonetheless, thank you so much. And yeah, I don't have anything else to say. So I think that's it for the video. So if you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up, comment down below, especially if you gifted me something, I'd love to say thank you personally. As always, if someone has left like an Instagram or Twitter handle in the notes, I will obviously message them, but not all of them do. So if you want me to thank you personally, feel free to comment down below. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. All the details for all the book clubs and read-alongs I host are linked down below in the description as they always are if you want to take part in anything. But that is it for the video. So bye, and I'll see you in the next one. I've just had the wonderful realization that I need to go find space on my shelves for all of these books. That's, that's a lot of books to go fit on my shelves. Wish me luck. <laughs>